everyone, and welcome to Luwapa News, a program made by Scouts for Scouts, right here in the Northeastern Pennsylvania Council. My name is Leo Cahagis, and welcome to all of our viewers from throughout Pennsylvania and across the country. On this week's episode, we'll be taking a step out into nature to investigate the essential principles of leave no trace and tread lightly. Before that, though, let's get a check on the weather with meteorologist Paige Morgan. Thanks, Leo. Here's your weather report for this fine weekend. We're going to have some wind from the south. Um, that was weird. Anyway, there's also going to be some snow from the north. What? 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 Excuse me? Um, okay, well, there's going to be some hail from the Midwest. <laughs> Alright, um, can, can you, can you read this last one? And tomorrow, this area will have heavy rains. Back to you, back to you, Leo. Thanks a lot, Paige and Mr. Morgan. Up next, we go to former nature director at Goose Pond Summer Camp, Joe Norvillis, for the principles of Leave No Trace. Hey guys, Joe Norvillis here from Goose Pond Scout Reservation. I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you guys about um, Leave No Trace and the importance of Leave No Trace during COVID-19. Uh, here I am currently at Toby Hans State Park where I'm practicing social distancing by fishing. And uh, many of you guys might be out uh, right now whether you're out exploring the woods or hiking or something, I want to make sure that we're all practicing leave no trace, uh, especially during COVID-19. Um, so as we all know, principle number one of leave no trace is to plan ahead and prepare. Um, so before I came out here to Toby Hanna State Park, um, I knew wanted to plan on what I was doing. So the first thing that I decided that was I was fishing. You can see my fishing stuff right here. Um, and in order to go fishing in Pennsylvania, you have to follow certain laws. So I had to make sure that I had my fishing license and that I had a photo ID with me in case I was stopped by a game commission officer or a fish warden um, to make sure that I am, in fact, allowed to fish here. Uh, so make sure that you're checking those regulations. Also, with COVID-19, we want to make sure that we are following the laws, too, while we're playing ahead and preparing. So we want to plan ahead to make sure that we're social distancing. Oh, here, I'm far away. I don't really, no one's around me. Um, so I want to make sure that we're doing that and we want to make sure that we have a mask and other PPE in case that we do come in contact with someone that we're able to do that safely. Um, principle number two of Leave No Trace, as we all know, is traveling camp on durable surfaces. Um, so one thing here at Toby Hanna State Park, there's trails. So we want to make sure that we're staying on the trails. Um, there is one point though where it is kind of okay not to be on the trail and that's when you're hiking and that you're passing somebody else, especially during this COVID-19 situation, we want to make sure that we're six feet away. And in order to do that, um, we might have to step off the trail for that. So it is totally okay if during this COVID-19 situation to step off the trail in order to be able to uh, keep yourself safe during the COVID-19 situation. Principle number three is dispose of waste properly. Um, so as we're here, I'm fishing here. Um, I want to make sure that everything I come in with, I'm taken out with. Uh, that includes extra fishing line that may have fell off my hook and stuff like that. Um, another thing during COVID-19, um, we want to make sure that we are properly disposing of our PPE correctly. Um, that includes our masks, gloves, and stuff like that. We don't want to be laying, leaving those on the ground for other people to pick up because that might get them contaminated and make them sick. Uh, so that's a perfect segue into principle number four, which is leave what you find. Uh, so leaving what you find, um, that's ever so important now more than ever during COVID-19 because we want to be leaving our masks or we don't want to be touching other people's masks and gloves. Um, that's why we want to be taking our masks and our gloves when we leave to make sure that other people do not have to touch our PPE. Um, if you see trash on the ground, I'd say for now, I'd leave it. Um, you don't know who else has touched that trash and if they've been infected with COVID-19. So you want to make sure that you are only touching your stuff and it is okay for now to uh, not dispose of that type of waste properly unless it's your own. Uh, so principle number five is uh, minimize campfire impacts. So 
Um, as we all know, a lot of people have been having campfires lately, especially with uh, online campfires and the scouts doing campfires for everyone. So one thing you want to make sure of is the regulations. So right now you could see that it's spring where I am, um, but everything is uh, there's a lot of, still a lot of dead plants out, and that means it's highly susceptible to being uh, forest fire right now. So what we want to make sure is that there's no burn bans where we are. Uh, that's very important in the spring. We want to make sure that we are checking the laws and regulations where we are to make sure that it's okay to burn where we are. Uh, principle number six, a leave no trace, is probably one of the only ones that haven't been currently affected by COVID-19, is respecting wildlife. So where we are out here, um, if we do see wildlife, we want to make sure that we maintain it from a respectable distance and to um, not go near it. Um, while I'm fishing, I'm making sure that I'm only taking what is needed. Um, I'm making sure that the fish I'm taking are within legal reasons and stuff like that. And I'm not taking smaller fish or fish that I can't keep. And finally, principle number seven is probably the most important right now during COVID-19 in this situation is respecting other visitors and being courteous to other visitors. Um, so as I'm here, um, I might occur, uh, occur some people might walk past me on the trail. I want to make sure that I'm giving them their social distancing, maintaining six feet. Uh, I want to be courteous by, again, not leaving my mask and gloves on the ground and take them with me instead. Um, and the best way I remember talking about uh, teaching this with other people, and someone brought it up, the best way to maintain or to be courteous to other visitors, rather, is by following the six other principles of leave no trace. Um, so if we're able to plan ahead and prepare, if we're able to travel and camp on durable surfaces, dispose of our waste properly, leave what we find, minimize campfire impact, and being courteous to other visitors, we're able to finally, principle number seven, be courteous to other visitors. So I hope you all learned something today from um, this Leave No Trace talk and how it is important during the COVID-19 situation. I'll see you guys again around the pond again soon. Thanks, Joe. Up next, let's check out how to tread lightly with Nick Sherman. Thanks, Leo. Hello, everybody. My name is Nick Sherman, and I'm the Vice Chief of Program of the Wapnu Lodge. Today, I'm here to teach you about tread lightly. This is under first class of requirement 1B. So if you're working on your first class, this is a great opportunity to earn this requirement. Now, tread lightly is broken up into five principles. T, R, E, A, and D. The first principle, the T, stands for travel responsibly, and this can mean many different things such as for driving, for hiking, for cycling, and for ATVs and snowmobiles. So for driving, you always want to stay on clear and either marked or unmarked roads just so, just as long as they're meant for you to drive on. Don't go anywhere that you're not supposed to and make sure that you're staying on the road. For hiking, you always want to stay on the trail so that we can preserve wildlife and avoid sensitive areas, which we'll get to later. If you're cycling, you want to stay on the road or stay on the designated bike trail that is meant for you to use. And if you're using your ATV or your snowmobile, it's best if you stay on clear, marked, designated ATV and snowmobile trails as just as long as they are meant for you to be used. Traveling responsibly is so important because we're preserving wildlife and we're also following the law as an added bonus. So that is travel responsibly. All right, so the second principle of tread lightly is to respect the rights of others. And for this one, I'd like to give a personal example. So my troop, Troop One in Honesdale, we go camping at least once a year at Cherry Ridge Campground. And along with us that weekend, there are other people that live at Cherry Ridge Campground. And it's important that we respect the rights to them so that they respect us and we can keep using their facility in the future without them being disrupted by us. So respecting the rights of others is so important because we want to be able to use facilities in the future. And if we respect the rights of others, then that allows us to keep using facilities and to, for us to keep a good reputation in that community. So that's the second principle of tread lightly, respect the rights of others. All right, everybody. So the third principle of tread lightly is to educate yourself. Now, this could mean looking at maps, looking at weather forecasts, and looking at any other information about a place that you want to go to in order to camp for a weekend 
or even just to spend the day with your family. Now, if I were to go to Philmont for two weeks on an OA trail crew trek, I would want to look at the map of Philmont. I would want to look at the information that goes into the OA trail crew program. And I would want to look at weather forecasts for that week, for, that, for those two weeks, so that I can see what I'm getting myself into if I go out to Philmont for that week or for those two weeks. So educating yourself is so important because it allows you to plan ahead and prepare for trips that you might be going on in the future. That way, you know what you're getting yourself into when you get out there. So that's the third principle of tread lightly, educate yourself. All right, everybody. So the fourth principle of tread lightly is to avoid sensitive areas. Now, I like to go back to the first principle for a little bit, which is travel responsibly. And in order to travel responsibly, we need to avoid sensitive areas. So this means avoiding meadows, streams, and any other areas that you're not meant to be in. This way, we can avoid making social trails so that we can preserve the wildlife and sensitive soils that are in the land. Also, any historical sites or archeological sites, you should avoid them at all costs. You can take pictures of them, that's great, that's fine, but don't go anywhere near them and touch them so that the, they can be preserved for other people to see for generations to come. And I'd like to end this principle by uh, giving you guys a quote that I like to use when I teach tread lightly and leave no trace to the scouts in my troop, which is to take only pictures and leave only footprints. All right, everybody. So the fifth and final principle of tread lightly is to do your part. Now, obviously, those last four principles that I've explained, they are super important for protecting wildlife, protecting land, and protecting the world in general. But we could talk about the principles all we want and talk about how much they benefit the world. But if we don't practice them, then those other principles lose their meaning. We need to be able to practice these principles and practice what we preach so that future generations down the road from us can learn from our good example and enjoy wildlife just as much as we do. That's it for me. Thank you everybody for listening. I hope you've learned a lot about Tread Lightly and I hope you've learned a lot about protecting the world and protecting wildlife. Leo, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Up next, let's try to figure out a riddle with Logan Patton. Hey, all you cool scouts and scouters. I'm Logan Patton, an Eagle Scout from Troop 55, and I have this week's scouting riddle. Tell me, what goes up and down stairs, but doesn't move? Your answer is this. A carpet. Back to you, Leo. Quite the brain teaser, Logan. Now for the last segment on today's show, we go to Mr. Hughes for the Scoutmaster's Minute. Good day, Scouts and Arrowmen. This is Mr. Hughes here with the Scoutmaster's Minute. If you know me, you know normally I have Scoutmaster's Minutes about my Navy career or people that I work with at Lockheed Martin. Today's the latter. Many of the people at Lockheed Martin really, really inspire me. In this case, a young woman uh, inspired me and has a great tale. I'm going to read you some of her quotes from a recent news article at Lockheed Martin. The article is called Fueled by Dreams, by, fueled by, excuse me, Fueled by Big Dreams. The woman's name is Caitlin Keene, and for most people, running a marathon is a bucket list item. For Caitlin, something very much different, though. Marathon is part of who she is and will continue to be for the foreseeable future. Caitlin is an Olympic trial qualifier. That's pretty awesome. So Caitlin, who can run the 26.2-mile marathon five times, the fifth time being the 2020 Olympic trials. Caitlin didn't start out running, uh, but once she did, she really got into it. In 2016, I quote from her, she made a decision to put my head down and do what I need to make the 2020 trials. I was prepared for the dedication and sacrifice that comes with a decision like that. Caitlin made the qualifying time on her third marathon, two hours and 42 minutes. I'm going to say that again. Two hours and 42 minutes qualified her to participate in the Olympic trials. That's six minute, 12 second miles on average. That's pretty awesome. I don't know if I can drive a car that fast. 
but Caitlin dreamed big. And if you've ever gone to National Youth Leadership Training here in Northeastern Pennsylvania, we call it Great Medicine, you'll know that we always talk about owning a vision. What is a vision? And a vision is what future success looks like. In this case, Caitlin's got a vision. She's got two of them we'll talk about today. And to go along with her vision, she's got some awesome, awesome goals. One of them that she recognized very early is she had to set aside the idea of a normal lifestyle, what it looked like for a 20-something. Caitlin's only 27. Unfortunately, there are people who can't see Caitlin's dream the way, same way she does. Quote, I had to make an active choice to keep reaching for big dreams instead of making myself smaller to match people in my life who don't get it. I got to read that again. I had to make an active choice to keep reaching for big dreams instead of making myself smaller to match people in my life who didn't get it. Oh, that's an awesome thought. Caitlin is not interested in meeting people in the middle when it comes to her dreams. In fact, she says having big dreams makes it easier to find room in her life for only those who truly support her. Not everyone's going to understand, and that's okay. On February 29th, 2020, Caitlin placed in the top 50 of marathon competition in the Olympic trials. That's an impressive accomplishment. As an athlete, Caitlin is stronger, is no stranger to setting goals. She started with a goal to run a marathon, then to win a marathon, then to make it to trials. Next up, she wanted to be among the top 10 female competitors within eight years. After that, one of the top three makers making it to the Olympic Games. Those are pretty awesome goals, and that's surely a vision in there. So what I want to pass to you is what Caitlin's taught me and can teach us. Remember, as Caitlin said, not everyone's going to understand, and that's okay. Maybe they're not going to understand scouting. Maybe they're not going to understand leave no trace. But they certainly, her comment, I had to make an active choice to keep reaching for big dreams instead of making myself smaller to match people in my life who didn't get it. Stay strong, stay big, keep your dreams big, keep your visions big. Good luck. Thank you very much, Mr. Hughes. That'll just about do it for this week's episode of Loapa News. Remember, if there's any scouting content that you'd like to see on the video, just send us an email. Our address is linked in the description of this video. For Loapa News, this has been Leo Cahagius. See you next week.